So let's talk about the humanitarian crisis in Texas. Hey, what's going on? My name is Nate the Lawyer, and welcome to the Brody's Bunch, where you are the jury of today's content. If you haven't already, don't forget to like this video, share this video, and subscribe to the channel if you like what you hear. So let's first let's start off with the facts. Texas has its own power grid, which is free from federal regulations. Now, this gives them the benefit of having a system that's deregulated, but that comes at a cost. See, for instance, the feds force the rest of the country to weatherize the power grid for cold weather. For instance, in Arizona, they have to weatherize for cold weather, even though they're in a desert. Now, Texas is free from that regulation. Now, this is because Texas' power grid is within the state boundaries. So since it doesn't cross state lines, the federal government can't regulate it. See, in the United States, we have what's known as the Interstate Commerce Clause. Now, this allows the federal government to regulate commerce between the states. So if Texas was getting energy from, let's say, Oklahoma, then the federal government could regulate that exchange of power. But that regulation does not apply to power grids that are within the state's own borders. So in Texas, power plants didn't have to weatherize for cold weather. The law did not require them to. Now here's Texas Governor Abbott explaining the consequences of not weatherizing the equipment. Uh, we are joined live by uh, Governor Greg Abbott and Nim Kidd, the chief of the Texas Division of Emergency Management. Uh, Governor, Texans are demanding someone be held accountable. Who's to blame? There are several people who have really fallen short here. I'll tell you what the challenges are and what has happened, and that is uh, though the, the companies that generate the power, uh, their operations have frozen up uh, or have tripwired uh, and are non-operational. Uh, that is the lead reason uh, why there is a shortage of power uh, for the people who are lacking power right now. There is an additional reason uh, causing a lack of natural gas uh, arriving to power generation centers across the state, and that's because the ability uh, to both manufacture and to ship and transport uh, natural gas has been frozen also. So we're clear on the facts. Fossil fuels failed, right? Natural gas is frozen in the pipes. Renewables failed. Wind turbines froze. Now, this is in contrast to wind turbines in, let's say, Atlantic City, New Jersey, that still work in sub-freezing temperatures. So we have a situation in Texas where Texas power plants just couldn't generate enough power to supply everybody. How do you choose who to give power to? Rolling blackouts. This allows everyone to get some power during the day to take a shower, heat your home. Now, for the rest of us, this wouldn't be a problem. And that's because we can borrow power from other states within our interconnected group. So, for instance, if New York needed more power because a couple of our plants went down, we could just borrow power from, let's say, New Jersey and Connecticut until our power plant was able to pick up the slack. But Texas was not part of this interconnected system, so Texas essentially was on its own. Now, the governor of Texas was asked if these companies should be regulated or if they should be punished for not weatherizing their equipment to avoid such a catastrophe. Are you going to push lawmakers to punish the utilities that fail to winterize their equipment or incentivize those who do? We will look at all strategies, whether it's punish or incentivize, but the bottom line is to get results. You would have expected, we expected, uh, that the utilities would have winterized their equipment for something like this, although we do have to understand the last time something like this happened was more than 100 years ago, but that we will be calling uh, all of the utilities uh, before the state legislature to get answers from them why their equipment was not winterized to protect against this type of situation. Governor now, it's interesting. Later that day, the governor seemed to blame the Green New Deal for Texas problems. But I don't know how or if that even applies. Because, again, this was a failure in the infrastructure, right? Their infrastructure was just not prepared for cold weather. But now, what do you think? Are you against all regulations? Should Texas force companies to winterize for cold weather? Or should Texas utilities have the option? to win a rise or not, because again, this happens once every hundred years. The comment section is where it's at. Let's say there's an act that comes up and says, we're gonna force all our utility companies to weatherize in case of cold weather. Do you think that's a good idea? Do you think that's a bad idea? Without the political spin, this is a simple problem. They weren't prepared for cold weather. 
and cold weather came. But I bet you in the future, they will be. Leave your comments in the comment section. Let me know how you feel. My name is Nate Deloy, and I'm out of here.